Hey, welcome to the section of functions. Okay, it's a very important word. We have to begin by defining it. What is a function? Okay, let's just go back to the first time you encounter lines. Okay. So the most popular form uh, I would say is y equals mx plus b. Okay, so let's say you have like example y equals 2x, right? And something as simple as y equals 2x. What is this about, right? So it's telling you a, a story about a relationship between x and y, and x is a number, right? It's a number, and so is y. And what we're doing to the x value is that we're doubling it. Okay, we're doubling it to get y. So you can think of that as, okay, if you think of that as a um, bunch of numbers, okay, and here we're not talking about one number, we're talking about a group of numbers, right? So let's say we have one, two, three, four. If these are x's, this rule is telling you assign these values to another set of values by doubling it. Timesing it by two, timesing it by two, and so on to get two, four, two, four, six, eight. Okay. So this rule, right, this rule of assigning the x value to y value is called function. Okay, so basically a function is a way you to assign a group of numbers to another set of numbers with a specific rule. Okay, with one extra detail. Each of the numbers that you're assigning to y has to be unique. Okay, so what I mean by that is we cannot have a scenario like this. Okay, so you have group of numbers, one, two, three, four. You cannot assign, let's say, one to two, and some other times assign one to, let's say, four. Okay. So when this happens, we are assigning one to other numbers. But we're assigning to two other numbers, right? So you got two result. Okay. You can think of this as your outcome of applying a rule, right? And this is sort of the, um, the your initial input numbers, initial starting numbers. You apply a rule to it. And if the result to any of the input is two different outcomes, it's not a function. It has to be one like this, okay? And example like this, <clears throat> is it possible for us to double a number to get two different outcomes? No, right? It's going to be always one unique value. If you had another example like this, where y equals you know, 2x minus 3, is it possible for you to think about a number, when you replace, when you double it, subtract by 3, you get two outcomes. Again, okay, it should be pretty obvious to you that that's not the case. Visually, right? 2x minus 3 looks something like this. So for every one of these x values, so if you have an x value here, the corresponding y value is right there. Okay. So this x value gets assigned to, you can think of it as it gets assigned to that y value. So, I mean, we, we drew graphs before. You probably didn't interpret this right, equation of a line that way. These are just set of points where once you know an x value, you know to which y value you're going, to, you're going to assign to. So this x value on this line, based on this rule, we're getting assigned to that y value. And that y value is different, right? You can see that it's quite a bit different from this length. So that's function. Okay, that's a We call that a linear function because it forms a line. What about the parabola? Okay, so what, let's say, let's do a very basic one, y equals x squared. Okay, let's draw a rough picture. 
again, if, without the graph, you can think of, is there a number that you square and sometimes you get two different values, right? No matter what you plug in, if you square it, you always get one result, right? So one squared, one squared gets assigned to one. Two squared gets assigned to four. Three squared gets assigned to nine. Now, the unique thing about parabola is that negative one, negative one also gets assigned to one. Okay, negative one also gets assigned to one. So this is okay. So let's say one, two, negative one, negative two. Remember the rule is to be a function, each input must get assigned to one output. So that gets assigned to one. This also gets assigned to negative one, but that input is still getting assigned to that one specific value, okay? We just can't have two arrows sticking out, right? To represent it's getting assigned to two separate values. Okay, so this has a unique name though. This is called uh, many two, many to one function where you have only one x value gets unique assigned to a unique y value this is called a one to one one to one function okay and these terminology is actually quite important for us to quickly talk about more advanced features of functions later okay so before i go into more advanced examples um, let me uh, finish with a story okay so what why is it important that we have something called function where we assign okay, to the input, we assign each of the input one result? Okay, Why is it important that we only assign it to one? Well, what it's saying to us is that the rule here is going to be predictable. We're creating a predict predictable rule. So if you know what the input is and you know that that gets assigned to a particular number, like let's say four, because the function, okay, in this case, the way we write this, and we'll go into this notation a little bit more in depth, okay, because so, y is equal to two x, you can think of that as y for now. It's very predictable what we're gonna get, right? If you get sometimes four and sometimes eight, this is unpredictable. So when we're actually designing things in life, right? So let's say um, you have a vending machine. Okay, the input for a vending machine is typically you have to press a number, maybe C1, and you have to maybe put $2 in. This is your input, okay? $2, you put, you know, let's say, punch in C1, which correspond to, let's say, the candy that you want in the vending machine. But if it sometimes it gives you that candy, and sometimes it gives you a different candy, would you use this machine again? Probably not, right? Even like computers, you know, if you hit the letter A, it better type in A, right? It better, it better not do something else. So that's also a function. So everything that particularly we design, right? People design for other people to use, we design it as a function. So people use it, they understand, ah, if you use it this way, this is the outcome that we're gonna get. So particularly, um, not just machines, but particularly like in uh, computer programming, you're always gonna be designing things so that there's particular inputs. And if you know what that input is, and you know what the rule is, you get a predictable outcome. Okay, so the rule itself is important, but also what you're putting in is very important too. Okay, this is called the domain. Okay, so what you're putting in to the function is called the domain, and what comes out is called the range. Okay, so let me write this out. Okay, so if you're learning something new, to if you're learning a new um, program or something, right, you always have to think about, right, even if it's playing sports. Right, like you, you have to gain some new skill sets. Even if you're learning to play a game, you usually have to understand like what are the the inputs. So input for a game, for example, could be, you know, what are we, what are we playing with here? Do we, is it a game with like you play with a ball? If it's a video game, what kind of controller are you using? Right. Um, 
you have to understand like what buttons are available for this game. And then you have to actually understand if you press the buttons, what does it do, right? In the game itself. So that's rule signing, right? Pressing X on a, on a controller, it's not obvious that that would uh, translate to some certain things happening on the screen. But as you use it, you would understand that rule and you would only play this game if it is predictable. Like you press it, as long as you get good at pressing it with the right timing, right? Then you go, oh, I can get better at this. This is predictable. I understand what's happening here. So I can enjoy this game. So it's a function. That in itself is also a function itself, okay? Okay, so let me stop there and get into more details of functions in the coming videos. I'll see you there.